Almost tripped over a loose lifeline and landed in the drink. Man overboard. Man overboard. Whew. Especially on this dock. <laughs> I know with the camera moving you can't see it moving, but it's moving. <laughs> Sanded and vacuumed the fillet. Tapasil epoxy fillet. And now we're gonna get ready to acetone it and start fiberglassing. And it's warm today. It's got to be what, 65? <laughs> Almost 70. Todd and I started traveling in an RV eight years ago with seven of our 10 kids. One by one, they've flown the coop and started their own adventures. Now, after three years of fixing up a hurricane damaged sailboat, we're ready to explore the world with our last three kiddos before they're gone too. I'm going to cut these off a little bit. Sometimes, if you cut these a little shorter, it's a little easier to work. It makes it a little uneven, but it's like a bad haircut. Anyway, a little more stiffness for dabbing. Okay, let's mix some epoxy. Probably make this a double. Oh, okay. let's make it a double because we're uh, you're getting wild now. Well, I gotta, I gotta prime it too. So, <sighs> all right, guys, one day. Uh, I think it's a little after five. Let me see here. Just double check right here. Ooh, 525. So one day basically this is how far we got. I think we've got maybe just under half of one side. But that's all the way down to the ferry. I still have to do all the way back. I haven't even made it to the gate yet. So that was one day's worth of work. So I don't know, it's taking a little longer than I thought, but I think the end result's gonna be nice. So tired, I'm beat. Of course we had 20 to 30 knot winds today for a good part of the day. That takes a lot out of you when you're trying to work in that with uh, fiberglass stuff. So I'm gonna go rest. We'll see you later. Okay, I have a big apology. When I was fiberglassing in this tow rail, there was really only two of us here and with our gloves and epoxy on our hands I just wasn't able to film it as I went and so I just wanted to just take a quick second and show you what it was I used for that so I have two uh, sizes of fiberglass cloth I have an 8 inch and I have a 3 inch and these these are the ones that are stitched on the side so they don't unravel on the side I mean it'll unravel on the end but not on the side. And uh, the eight inch worked perfectly for us to go all the way over and around in one pass for the tall, or for the normal stuff. The stuff that had the track on top that I didn't go over the track, we used the three inch on each side. Normally, I would wet this stuff out on the table ahead of time, but then I figured, found carrying it over to the tow rail and trying to apply it on there was really difficult. So what I found was the easiest way was to actually prime the tow rail first with a brush and then we cut the fiberglass into 12 inch to 24 inch long pieces depending on where we were uh, on the tow rail and we would lay it over dry and then we applied the epoxy with the brush and dabbed it in until it turned translucent. We did two layers of fiberglass. Normally you'd just do one layer and go back when it starts tacky and do the other layer. I just did them both at the same time as I went, but I staggered the joints between them so they weren't lined up with each other. And I did, you know, one piece, another piece, and then I put another piece on top to start the second layer and worked my way down. And when we got down, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 feet, I would just kind of go back and check the beginning. If it was starting to get firm, like tacky firm, we stopped applying fiberglass and we'd mix up some fairing and go ahead and fair that all in so that we had a chemical bond on everything rather than trying to wait a day and sand it and, and clean it back up. We wanted to have a chemical bond on everything. So that's how we did it. U.S. Composites has a pretty good price on this fairing compound. This is similar to the um, the West Systems. I don't remember what it is, what the number is, but they have a tan kind of a fairing compound as well. This is pretty sim similar to that, 
Um, it's just a an additive that's easy to sand. And I mix this up in the epoxy, and I mix it up to probably a mayonnaise, maybe ketchup to mayonnaise consistency. It's thick, but not super duper thick because I applied it with a paintbrush, basically. And just by dipping it in and painting it on, and it actually worked out really, really well, and it, it had good coverage, it went into the cracks really easy, and you could just brush it out fairly nice, and it made it a lot easier to sand when I was done. So those are the kind of the things that we used with this, as well as our West System epoxy. While Todd and Gabe were working hard, I took the girls, a grandson, and a gaggle of cousins to the fun center to escape the winter weather. You girls were taking, it said, it said free throw, but these are all the girls were teaming up on us. These places are quite the adventure. You ready? You ready to go? <laughs> and Denali's going like, yeah, can we get out of here, please? Well, I'll show you what we got done here. This was yesterday's. Right here. To here. And then Gabe and I did this today. All the way. All the way. All the way. All the way, all the way back. One side is done. Man, I'm excited about that. Still got this side to do. It's partially prepped, but not all the way. We do have some wind blowing. We got our pirate country up. But nice blue skies. Yeah, it actually was a really nice day to work on this today, even though it was windy. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold, so the, the epoxy worked perfectly. So hopefully we can get the other side done faster. Although it's gonna have to wait a week, I gotta go out of town, so. All right guys, talk to you tomorrow. But I gotta get the boat ready for Tammy to come back. We've kind of been bacheloring it here, Gabe and I. Ah! And uh, working, working on the boat, working on RV jobs, working on cabinets, and uh, well, you can kind of see what the cockpit looks like, right? Hey, but at least it's dry and it's not windy in here because this nice enclosure is actually doing a really good job. On a sunny day, though, it gets pretty toasty in here. It's almost as bad down here. Probably not quite as bad, but almost as bad. Dave did do the dishes, so we're good there. But, <laughs> hey, don't look at the marshmallow maybe. Don't tell my wife I got those. Does anybody else like those? <laughs> A mess here, <laughs> you know. Ah. Oh, this is the video station. But, you know, it's come along. I got, got a bunch more wiring done. Hopefully I can have this closed up before she gets home. And of course, Abigail and Liberty's bunks, they're pretty hammered. So I need to button up a couple of these projects that I've been working on and then clean up the mess around them. I'm gonna get after it, I guess. Well, let's see here. This is what it's like. Oh, dark 30. What is that? It's about 3, 3.40 a.m. Headed off to an RV armor job up by Houston. Got to be there by 7 in the morning. So, means we got to get up dang early. Oh, well. That's life right now. 
So I'm headed out. I'm gonna keep an eye on the road, so that's what I'm not looking at you. But I'm, he I'm headed out to take pictures of some good friends for their anniversary, which is kind of fun. I've taken pictures of them and their family over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And it's, it's something I enjoy doing, so I'm excited about doing it. I also get to look for a space. My daughter is getting married tomorrow. It is her second marriage, and they're just doing a family ceremony, and it's kind of spur of the moment. Like, they have all the licenses and all of that, but they hadn't found a location, so I'm scouting for that while we are out here taking pictures. So, get to come along and see some of beautiful Alaska with me today. I'm gonna go explore this area. I'm here a few minutes early to see what spaces look good for taking some pictures and maybe for my daughter's wedding that is tomorrow. I did bring boots, so. All right, everybody. Back from the RV trip, Got the trailer secured. And it's a whopping 36 degrees here. And uh, uh, wind's blowing, but not as bad as it was last night. But, man, it's cold. Feels like Alaska. Man. Well, let's see if we can get some work done today. <clears throat> All right, today is the day where I have to get the boat ready for Tammy to come home. She's coming home tomorrow. All right, I don't know how this works, but let's try it. Look at this, we have breaker box, breakers, transfer switch for shore and generator. have a Santrex inverter set up. Not too bad. The girls' beds are okay. Pretty much the stuff that's on them is the stuff they left on them, but I think we're pretty much ready for the girls and Tammy to come back. So, it's pretty awesome. It's wedding day and we're still searching for the perfect spot. Believe it or not, there's more snow than usual and it's keeping us from accessing the usual spots. Are we going down the hill? Yes. <laughs> What do you see out there, Monty? There's fish. Ooh, is there it's mountains? Fish. You say fish. Fish? fish? Oh, I trees. See. Is there trees? Yeah, I see fish. trees too. You sounds like you're saying fish. I see trees on the mountain. You see trees on the mountain? Yeah. Lots of snow. This beautiful place is Hatcher's Pass. There's tons of activities year round up here. It used to be, like, it used, this is all used to be a gravel road, and this was a one lane to get around this corner. They had to like blast out the edge of that mountain to make it two lanes. Right. There was too much snow to get off the road up here, so we thought we'd go down and try the old Knick River Bridge. Where are we going, Monty Man? To the water to find fish. To the water to find fish? We are headed home. Home to Texas. Girls are in here. The cat's in here. The cat is whining. The cat is whining. Katie is taking us to the airport and we have a midnight flight. We leave at midnight and we don't get into Texas until three o'clock in the afternoon. And there's the kitty kitty. So 
we will see you in Texas. Okay, it's a glorious morning in multiple ways. I mean, it's supposed to be 74 degrees here today, which is wonderful, awesome. But the best news is I'm on my way to get my sweetheart. Denali and I are going for it. Slide over. Are you ready to go? Let's go get them. <laughs> well, they're here and we're pulling up. Says, who are you? I recognize you. I think I recognize you, though. I know, puppy. Hello. Hello. Hi, right. beautiful. I wasn't going to film this part. <laughs> now we did. Now you did. You do this, I will do this. You smell bad. The smell smells bad? Yeah. That doesn't take care of our sheep's bad. Mm. <laughs> well, it looks like they're getting along. Living on the coast, we're three to four hours from multiple airports, which allows us to choose the best combination of price and schedule. I timed this trip so that Todd could drive during the day and we could still get home in time to get a good night's sleep. While I've only been away a couple of episodes, in real time, it's been nearly six weeks. I am thrilled to be back home with my best friend. Texas and Alaska have a lot in common, and I find that my heart has come to appreciate the differences in the beauty that they both have to offer. Kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, You don't want to talk? No, I'm tired. <laughs> and I go in and go to bed. <laughs> it's nice to be back. It's oh ready. dark 30. Yeah. Home sweet float. Floating home. Well, Mom, what do you think of the boat? It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Outlet. Anything different? Oh, the outlets are working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you get all of the power going? Look, I have breakers. Oh. That's exciting. <laughs> I 